Hi guys, give me a second as usual. I'm just making sure that I am live. Okay. I don't know if I'll get anybody today, but if I do, that's awesome. We will be redoing this live a little later in the day, but I wanted to go ahead and talk about um, how you can go about keeping things, keeping specimens. So, first off, if you're going to be keeping anything that has color, Um, rather that is something like this, which has a little bit of color. This is my Bumblebee Jasper. Let's see if I can, I don't want it to get too hot, but you can see there's a fair amount of color in that. Hopefully you can see that. Um, you want to keep that out of the sun. Because the sun is going to fade color. So that's one part of it. The other part is you don't want it to chip. So you want to make sure that it's in a container, that there's cushioning of some sort. I have, I use toilet paper or tissue paper. You could use cotton. And that pretty much goes for any specimen that you might have. Rocks, you, you want to make sure that they're protected. Um, because crystals can chip, shells can chip, bones can chip, um... We want to make sure that they're clean because some things will actually um, get dirty and grimy. I want to talk about um, tarantula molts. The way I keep my tarantula molts, which I don't do anymore, um, but you can see I have a tag on it. It's just a piece of tape. That I can write on. Um, it has the scientific name, the genus, or the genus, and the um, species name on it, and then it has the date, the date on which I either removed the molt or the date that it molt, the date that it molted. Um, I have. You can use any type of a container. This happens to be a peanut butter jar container. Um, you could put down the name of the spider if, if you so decide to. Lots of, lots of information can be put on one of these. And I have, again, tissue paper. Now, the thing about tarantula molts is they get very fragile. Um, so you don't want to handle them a lot. The other thing you can do is you don't want to get insects into your molts, and we'll talk about that here in a bit. Um, you could even put in cedar chips or naphtha, or basically um, mothballs types of material, and that will keep insects from getting to your molts, which is a really good idea. Again, you want to protect your fragile things. Something like this is not necessarily going to protect it. But, again, it'll keep it in a place where you know where it's at. You are going to have fragile things. And I, I do suggest that if you are going to have things like this, which, again, is my textile cone shell, you're going to want to put it in something so that it doesn't get damaged. Things that are in plastic, such as 
this are liable to get scratches on it. Um, and fingerprints. Again, you don't want it to drop. I suggest that you, again, have padding on it and keep it, again, out of sunlight. Now, if you have, let's say you have a tarantula that just died and you want to preserve it, or you have an insect in your home and you want to find out what it is, but, you know, whatever the case may be, because I am... Because I have a science background, I have things that I have preserved in alcohol. Um, you can't do this with everything. The higher up you go in um, the animal tree uh, in classification, you're going to have a harder time using alcohol because it won't preserve it. But what I have found is for the lower stuff, Alcohol works fine. There are some tricks. So for worms, these are roundworms. Um, alcohol is going to work fine. But one thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that that lid is secure. Make sure it is super tight. That's going to help reduce evaporation. It's not going to stop it, but it will slow it down a little bit. Um, this has a silverfish in it. The idea is, is you want to preserve it. The alcohol is going to do that. Um... Again, you want to keep this stuff out of sunlight. So one thing about alcohol. If you don't, if you have an item that is dark in color, whatever that might be, it's going to suck the color out of it. So this happens to be a caterpillar. Um, the alcohol has done exactly what I said it would do. And it has sucked the color out of this. Now, I don't know. I'm going to try something. This was a hook, a hornworm off of one of our um, tomatoes. And you can see this used to be green. Caterpillars, you can do a couple different things. You can actually slice the bottom if you're a person that really, really, like if you're a, um, you're a entomologist, you can do different steps to preserve them. Um, one of the things you can do is you can actually take and you can slice the bottom. You can very carefully take out, you know, the insides and then sew it up. And fill it with cotton. Because you want it to keep its original form. You can also do that with tarantulas. You can, once it's dead, you can take whatever and then sew it back up. So that's always a possibility. I have found alcohol works wonders. Again, things you want to watch out for with that is evaporation, discoloration, and yeah. Again, the higher your alcohol, the better. The higher um, percentage, the better. Now, I promised you that we would talk about insects or insect damage. So I have this really, really nice um, insect display. 
And it is. It is a really, really nice insect display, but it also has insect damage. Um, you can see this discoloration right here. I believe that's insect damage. And you can also, you can't see it, I don't think. But there are, this bottom one, the, the actual body of the butterfly is gone. This is something I bought. And then I've had it for quite a while. To stop that, one of the things that you can do is you can, I don't recommend taking these things apart, but you could, and you can stick um, naphtha in it, or cedar. Um, and again, something like this, because it is um, bright and colorful, you wanna keep this out of the sun. So, yeah, if you have questions that you want to ask me, this would be a good time to get that out. I will be right back, though. I need to grab something I forgot. I'll be right back. Hopefully, I didn't lose my notes because they had some stuff that I wanted to go over. Sorry about that. So, last week, we had five videos, five shorts, seven lives and four posts. We had 3.6 thousand people um, view the videos or lives. We had nine new subscribers. Thank you, those of you that are new. We had 19 likes, 16 shares, and one comment. Next week, we're going to be talking about how to stay safe outside. Um, more or less. That is Friday's live. Tuesday's live is going to be a Q&A. So send in your questions. Leave them in the comments of videos. Or um, Instagram. And at Instagram, I am... What is my name on Instagram? I can't even remember. Nature Guy X12. So you can leave them there. Or if that's not to your liking, you can even leave them on TikTok because I am on TikTok, unfortunately. And on TikTok. I am Nature Guy 76. So you can leave questions on all of those, even on Facebook and the Facebook group. And I will get them and answer your questions there. So that is next Tuesday's live. And again, lives on Tuesdays are planned to be at noon to whenever we stop. The week after that, we're going to do weird animal laws, but I want to do them based on where you live. So that'll be interesting to do. Let's talk about more stuff. So if you want to preserve flowers, and there are different ways you can do it, um... But one of the ways that I suggest, and I've done it in the past, again, is alcohol. 
There are other ways to do it. Um, you can press them just like you do leaves. Not the prettiest way. The problem with alcohol is, again, it sucks the color out. If you want to preserve the color, there are ways you can actually do that. And, um, yeah, flowers are tricky. Leaves, you press them. Obviously, you, you want to press them. Otherwise, they do this. And that is not going, if you were to press that, it would just crumble. Um, but pressing leaves and then gluing them down to a piece of paper. I'm not going to go through how to do um, insects outside of alcohol. I just, if that's something you do want to see, maybe at a later date, we can do that probably next spring. But, yeah. So let's see. How to preserve flowers. There are things you can do. There are kits you can buy that'll do it. Um, so you can air dry them. So let's talk about air drying flowers. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you have your flowers. I have my flower stock going to use my finger, you're going to remove excess foliage. Okay? You want to get rid of those. Then, you're going to cut the stem to your desired length, but you want to keep at least six inches. Take a rubber band or twine, and you're going to tie the Bouquet, whatever, together. Then you're going to put them in a dark area, out of direct sunlight, because again, sunlight takes color. In a place that's dark, dry, you don't want to do this in your basement. That's not going to work. And in a place that is very well ventilated. Now this process is going to take two to three weeks. It's not going to be instant. After that, go out, buy name, don't buy a name brand hairspray, but get hairspray and spray your leaves. If you have silica gel, okay, you can go to the store and you can buy this. This is another way you can do it. Um, follow the directions on there, but this is what's here. So first thing you're going to want to do is remove the bloom. You want to follow the instructions. You're going to place the blossoms. Huh, sorry. You're going to place your flowers into the gel. And then you're going to pour more gel over that. 
so that it's covered. You're going to run your microwave for two to five minutes. If it is not dry after five minutes, then you're going to do more time. Remove it. Let it sit for 24 hours. Then remove the gel. And you want to very carefully remove the gel from the petals. And spray with acrylic spray. And that's going to protect it. Again, don't keep these things by by windows, out of the sunlight, because otherwise it is not going to go very well. You can also, believe it or not, use sand. And maybe at some point we will do that. So first thing you want to do is you're going to want a half an inch layer of sand in a box, a sturdy box. Lay your foliage, your flowers, whatever, on the sand. Okay? Then very slowly, you're going to add more sand. And you're going to do that until your plants are completely covered. This process is going to take about two weeks. You can, like I said, you can do, um, you can press just like you would leaves. And if that's something you want to do, again, you're going to remove any unwanted leaves um, or you can even remove the flowers and just, um, keep them, um, remove the flowers and some of the leaves. You're going to get a book. You want exorbitant paper. So watercolor sheets or cardstock, open up a book. The thicker the book, the better. Um, open it about a quarter to halfway. Insert your papers. Put your blossoms face down on the parchment paper. And then place your exorbitant paper. Underneath that, and then put your flowers and put more paper and then close the book. Place more books on top of that book and then wait three to four days. Or, sorry, three to four weeks. That's another way you can do it. Another way is to use epoxy. So something like this. And this stuff you can again buy in most hobby shops. The problem with that is it can be poisonous or toxic. Okay? So that's a little bit on how to do that. Yeah, I know I had to look it up, but I don't retain everything in my head. I do want to say that when you have shells, um, this one actually got broke in store. But if you have shells, don't keep them together in a drawer or all piled on top of each other because they will chip. And then you won't have really nice looking shells. This one I accidentally dropped at the store. And I wasn't planning on buying it. But since I broke it, I thought I'd better buy it. Um, yeah. 
So there's that. And since we're already 25 minutes in and nobody has come in, I'm going to actually end this live. And we may, I may hop back on for a little bit and go live with it. Maybe. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so next live is a Q&A. I'm going to post into the community page. By the way, you should be, if you're not checking out the community page on um, YouTube, that's where I post, I try to post um, different stuff. Like if I'm sick, sometimes I will post in there um, if videos are not going to happen that day or whatever. I need to get better at it. Guys, one thing I'm going to ask when you come into live is to talk with me. The other thing I'm going to ask is that you, if I do a um, poll or whatever, participate. This is, this happens because of you. Um, I know maybe the lives aren't the most exciting things to happen. I keep hitting my Chromebook. Um, but. I, I'm trying. Um, also, hitting the like wherever it's at, not sure, um, helps me out because that helps more people see the video. Um, oh, maybe up here. I can see the likes and I can see people coming in and out. But unless you participate, yeah, I don't have that. Um yeah. Thank you. And I will see you in the video for tomorrow, which I'm going to get ready to edit. Thank you and goodbye.